Hello. Welcome to Jesus for All 2. God's Word, your daily bread, the Bible, for October 30th, 2023. Here, we will hear daily readings of God's Word, the Bible, the bread of life. Our goal is to hear all of the Bible by the end of December 2023, to increase our faith and to please the Heavenly Father. For the book of Hebrews 11.6 reads, But without faith... It is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17 reads, So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Further, 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7 reads, For we walk by faith, not by sight, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief, in God's promises. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 16 through 17 reads, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. And John sixteen thirteen. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 7 through 8 reads, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. And Proverbs 11.30 reads, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. 11.28 But he said more than that, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Hallelujah. And so the word of God, words of God that we shall hear today, October 30th, are Psalm 140, from the book of Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 1 through 22. The New Testament readings, the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 1 through verse 52, and 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, verse 1 through 16. All scriptures, unless otherwise noted, are taken from the New King James Version of the Bible, copyright 1982 by Thomas Nelson, Incorporated, used by permission, all rights reserved. There were readings in the introduction today, from the Amplified Version of the Bible. I'd like to thank every listener of Jesus for all too. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that your faith is increasing, your knowledge of the promises of God, and that you are being given the grace to walk in those promises. That you might live that glorious life that our Lord and Savior gave his life that we might have, and rose and suffered for us. And I pray that you would Share Jesus for all two with another, and if you are inclined, that you would subscribe. And thank you, every listener and every subscriber. And now Psalm 140, a psalm of David, and it reads, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of asp is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men, who have purpose to make my steps stumble. 5. The proud have hidden a snare for me, and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Selah. 6. I said to the Lord, You are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O oh God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O oh Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. Selah. 9. As for the head of those who surround me, let, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. 11. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. 
12, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and, un and justice for the poor. Verse 13 and last for today. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our every of us to hear us. And now continuing with the book of Lamentations, chapter 5. And it reads, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Look and behold our reproach. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens and our houses to foreigners. We have become orphans and wakes. Our mothers are like widows. We pay for the water we drink and our wood comes at a price. They pursue at our heels. We labor and have no rest. We have given our land to the Egyptians and the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. 7. Our fathers sinned and are no more, but we bear their iniquities. Servants rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. 10. Our skin is hot as an oven because of the fever of famine. They ravished the women in Zion, the maidens in the cities of Judah. 12. Princes were hung up by their hands, and elders were not respected. Young men ground at the millstones, boys staggered under the loads of wood. The elders have ceased gathering at the gate, and the young men from their music. The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance has turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Verse 17, because of this, our heart is faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim. Because of Mount Zion, which is desolate, with foxes running about on it. 19, you, O Lord, remain forever. Your throne from generation to generation. Why do you forget us forever? and forsake us for so long a time. Turn us back to you, O Lord, and we will be restored. Renew our days as of old. Verse 22 and last. Unless you have utterly rejected us and are very angry with us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us to hear us. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the grace to hear this word and profit from it, profit from it at just such a time as this. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name. And now the book of Acts, chapter 13. And it reads, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Four. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And when they arrived in Sal Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. They also had John as their assistant. Now when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, seven, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But in Elymas, the sorcerer, for so his name was tra is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the truth. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O, oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, You enemy of all righteousness, 
Will you not cease perverting the straight way, ways of the Lord? 11. And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. 12. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had been done, being astonished at the teaching of the Lord. Now when Paul and his party set sail from Patros, they came to Persia in Pamphylia, and John departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from Persia, they came to Antioch in Sidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent to them, saying, Men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. 16. Then Paul stood up and motioning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt at strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out of it. Now for a time of about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to them by allotment. 20. After that he gave them judges for about 450 years, until Samuel the prophet. And afterward they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. Verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a Savior, Jesus. And after, after John had first preached, before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not he, but behold, there comes one after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to loose. 26. Men and brethren, son of the family of Abraham, and those among you who, who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and all their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. 28. And though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. Now when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. 32. And we declare to you glad tidings, that promise which was made to the fathers. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he has raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm. You are my son, today I have begotten you, verse 34, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken this. I will give you the sure mercies of David. 35. Therefore he also says in another psalm, You will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. 37. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you, the forgiveness of sins. And by him, every one who believes is justified from all things, from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. 40. Beware, therefore, lest what has been spoken in the prophets comes upon you. 41. Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. Verse 42. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, 
who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. 45. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. 47. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have sent you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be with salvation to the ends of the earth. 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of, Lord, of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life, believed. And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout all the region. 50. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women, and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them and came to Iconium, verse 52, and last for today. And the disciples were called filled, and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. And this word is already blessed as we pray in the name of Jesus Christ are every of us the hearers. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for the gift of the Holy Spirit because we believe in his Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, and it reads, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Open your hearts to us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I do not say this to condemn, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. Verse 4. Great is my boldness of speech toward you, Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. For indeed, when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were troubled on every side. Outside were conflicts, inside were fears. Six, nevertheless, God, who comforts the downcasts, comforted us by the coming of Titus. Seven, and not only by his coming, but also by the consolation with which he was comforted in you when he told us of your earnest desire, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced even more. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, I do not regret, regret it, though I did regret it, for I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. 9. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Verse 10. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner. What diligence it produced in you, what caring of yourselves. Let me take that again. What diligence it produced in you, what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. Verse 12. Therefore, although I wrote to you, I did not do it for the sake of him who had done the wrong, nor for the sake of him who suffered wrong, but that our care for you in the sight of God might appear to you. Verse 13, Therefore we have been comforted in your comfort, and we rejoice exceedingly more for the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For if in anything I have boasted it to him about you, I am not ashamed. But as we spoke all things to you in truth, even so our boasting to Titus was found true. 
and our affections are greater for you as he remembers the obedience of you all. How with fear and trembling you received him. Verse 16 and last for today. Therefore I rejoice that I have confidence in you in everything. Amen. And in the name of Jesus Christ, this word is already blessed. As we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, all, every of us, the hearers. Hallelujah. And glory to God in the highest. And we thank the Father in the name of Jesus Christ for Psalm 107.20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. We thank you, Father, for sending your word and healing us and delivering us from every destruction. Our prayer for the month of October has come from Psalm 36. And let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, give us a heart to be not envious of the evil man. Give us more grace to trust in you, our God, and do good, that we may dwell in safety and be well fed. O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we delight in you, give us, as it is written, the desires, our desires, and the secret petitions of our hearts. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that as we commit our way to you, you will bring it to pass. We thank you, O Lord, for preserving us and giving us refuge under the shadow of your wings. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for allowing us to feast on the abundance of your house and drink from the streams of your pleasures. We thank you, O Lord, in Jesus' name, that in your light we see light. Grant us the grace to know you, Father. In Jesus' name, that we may continue in your loving kindness and salvation. O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, let not the foot of pride, unforgiveness, offense, bitterness, anger, or even our feelings overtake us. And let not the hand of the wicked one drive us away from you, our God, our Savior and King. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen in Jesus' name.